After watching an edit of your favorite TV show, you decide to create one yourself. So you install After Effects and open it up, only to be met by this huge interface. What is this? Why is all of it so confusing? If only there was someone who could help me. Today I will show you step by step how you can make this exact fan edit of your favorite character to finally blow up on social media. And all we need is a sound, some footage and of course After Effects. Once you open up After Effects, it should look something like this. And now the first thing we have to do is create a new project. To do that, we're going to click on New Composition position and we will see this extra window popping up. The first setting we want to change in here is our resolution. In my case I want to use the square one so I'm going to put my width and height to 1080. There is loads of different formats for example 1170 by 1560, 1080 by 1920 and the list goes on. But in this case I'm going to use 1080 by 1080. Next for the frame rate I'm going to put 60 because obviously I want the smoothest possible outcome but anything past 60 won't be processed by social media platforms anyway. And lastly the duration of the edit is dependent on your audio. In my case I want to go for 30 seconds. Once we set all these settings we're going to press ok and as you can see we now have our timeline preview and all our panels but the first thing we have to do to start editing is import our footage that we want to work with and to do that we're going to head to the top under file click on import select file and then select our sound and footage once you selected both click on import and you can see you now have them in your project panel on the left the sound and your footage now the last thing we have to do to see them on our preview is make sure that they are both selected and then drag them onto our timeline as you can see we now have a preview of our clip and when you play ahead you can also hear your sound one of the key elements of your edit is going to be the sound so we have to make sure that it aligns with the video to do that we're going to mark our beat drops and then every time a beat drops we're going to change our clips so it lines up doing that is pretty simple first of all we have to make sure we disable the audio of our clips so they don't interfere with our sound just click this little speaker and then we're going to right click onto our audio go to keyframe assistant and hit convert audio into keyframes now when we select the layer and press u on our keyboard we have all these little points which will mark our beat drops to make that more visible we're going to click onto the slider under both channels and then open up our graph editor and now when we open up our graph editor you can see all of these spikes now when we go ahead to where we want our edit to start and zoom in a little bit it becomes a lot more clear now every time we have these spikes we know that there's a beat drop and now to not forget where they are we're going to go ahead with our time indicator onto the exact point where our beat drops then head to the right and click this little marker right here that will make an automatic marker on our timeline and now every time we want to replay our edit it will still be there and we can easily find out where our beat drops are and of course we're not going to do that for only one beat drop but for all the beat drops that our audio has so we're now going to go ahead to the next spike make sure our time indicator is aligned and then click the marker again as you can see now the marker is called number two so they are numbered another thing that you want to do is listen along to the audio and check if the beat drops actually align with the spikes because in some audios that might not be the case just watch out for that once you marked all the spikes in your audio your timeline should look something like this depending on how many beat drops you have and once that's done you can go ahead and close the graph editor again and we can now select the red layer and delete it because we don't need it anymore after marking all the beat drops our next objective will be finding the clips from our footage because if you're using a scene pack or download the clips from the internet you obviously want to separate the clips that are bad from the ones that are good. Good clips generally have the character fully visible and include some tiny movement but not too much. And we're going to start with the intro because obviously that's the first thing our viewers will see. So if you have your footage on your timeline and it looks something like this that the character is not fully in frame it's because our clip is too big for our composition and now to adjust that we're going to click onto the top layer which is our footage and then press S on our keyboard. This should bring up the scale and now we can just decrease that value until it fits. Make sure that you don't click on the edges and drag because that will just ruin the aspect ratio of the clip. Once we align the dimensions of the layer to our composition we're now going to double click onto the layer and what you can see now is a little extra timeline below our preview called time ruler and if you drag ahead your time marker on the time ruler it will automatically skip to that place in time so just drag ahead until you find the scene that you want to use for your intro that way it's way easier to navigate through the whole scene pack because as you can see in my case it's over one hour long once you drag your marker to the scene that you want to use which in my case is right here you can now go ahead and click this bracket and if you click on this bracket it will automatically cut to that place in time see in our main timeline it now cut the layer now we can close this layer on the top to get back to our main composition and then we will go ahead to the beat drop and cut our layer right there. In my case I want to use this scene for my first beat drop so I'm going to go to the second beat drop and cut the layer right here by clicking on it and pressing ctrl shift and d on my keyboard. As you can see the layer is now split and we can repeat this process for all the following clips. So we're going to double click back onto the layer and then drag ahead our time marker on our time ruler till we find the next scene that we want to use. Once you found the scene we're going to go back to the bracket click it once and you can see on our timeline the clip was automatically cut to that place in time. To make sure this clip now has the idea length we're going to right click onto the next time marker go to go to marker time and then while having this layer selected press ctrl shift and d and cut it as you can see you now isolated this clip and we will now keep repeating this process until we have all our clips so double click onto the layer again and then drag it ahead till you find the next scene that you want to use in my case it's going to be this one now i'm going to go to the bracket click it once and as you can see it automatically cut to that place in time so now i'm going to go to the fourth marker by right clicking and selecting go to marker time and then i can cut it again by pressing ctrl shift and d and i'll do that until you have 
with all your clips. Once you found all the clips, you will see that the timeline is already getting a bit more packed. And when playing your edit, it should now all align with your sound. And you might have already realized that the clips are not centered, meaning that his face, for example, in this clip is half cut off. And when you go to the next clip, you can also see he's not in the center of the frame. We obviously want him visible. And now to fix that, we can add a face tracker. What a face tracker does is it tracks the character's face and then aligns it to the center of the screen. And to add the face tracker, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to have to select the clip that you want to use. In my case, it's going to be this one. And then I'm going to double click onto the layer that you can see right here. And now again, we're back in the full preview, but this time we're going to open the tracker panel on the right. And if you can't see that, make sure you enable it by pressing on window and then enabling the check mark next to tracker. Once we're in this tracker panel, we're going to click on stabilize motion. And you can see if we zoom in now, we have these two little track points. These are basically going to mark the place where we want to track our face. And obviously this is not our face. So by clicking on them and making them a bit bigger, we can adjust the size, you can see. And now we can zoom out and drag it onto the character's face. Now you want to make sure that they're not too big because otherwise it will take way too long to analyze the clip and track it. This size is optimal, but it of course depends on what PC you have. Now the point that I always put my tracker on is the character's nose because it has a high contrast. If you put the tracker on the character's eyes, for example, and he blinks, then it will mess up the tracking point and it will go astray. So I would always choose the nose because it doesn't have any movement. Now make sure you're at the first frame of the clip by pressing I. And then once you have your track point aligned with the character's nose, we're going to head to the right and click this analyze forward button. Now it will analyze. And again, that might take a while depending on how fast your PC works. But once it's done and you zoom in, you can see you have all these little points. Now what I like to do is to double check. So I'm going to select my time marker, scroll back in time and see if they are actually all aligned with the nose and didn't go astray. And then we can go ahead and click apply. And in my case, I'm only going to select X because I only want the horizontal dimension to be tracked. Now your character's face will be stabilized, but make sure you do this for all the clips, including the intro. Once you tracked all your clips, you will realize that they're all stabilized, but some of them still aren't in the center of the screen. For example, this one. And now to fix that, we're going to have to adjust the position. So for every clip that's not in the center at the moment, you're going to click onto the clip, press P on your keyboard to bring up the positioning properties. And then we're going to increase or decrease the value on the left, which you can see right here to move it to the left or right. And as you can see, I have to move mine to the left. So I'm going to increase the value. And now the character is nice and centered. And I'm now going to do that for all the clips. So I'm going to go to this one as well. Click on it once, press P on my keyboard and then increase the value. So he's in the center of the screen. And now once we align the character's face to the center of the screen, we want to enable two more settings that will make the whole thing smoother. And to do that, we're going to select all of our clips from the bottom all the way to the top. And we're going to select this button right here, which is motion blur. And then we're going to select the second one, but press it twice, once and then twice. So it looks like this. By activating the setting, we will enable frame blending, which will make the whole edit smoother. If after enabling that, you encounter these weird glitches, then all we got to do is zoom in, go to where the glitch starts or is not happening. And then we're going to select the layer, which the glitch is on and cut it by pressing control shift and D. Now we're going to go ahead to the right where the glitch ends, which is one, two, three, three frames ahead. And then we're going to cut the layer again by pressing control shift and D. Now, as you can see, if we scroll down, we have this isolated clip right here. And then only for the small portion, we're going to disable the frame blending again, which is the setting on the left. Now, as you can see, the glitch will be gone. Now, once we finished all that, we're finally ready with the preparation and we can actually start using some effects now. But we don't want to put our effects directly onto our raw clips. What we're going to do instead is we're going to pre-compose them, which will make it easier to work with and just way cleaner. Now, to pre-compose a clip, we're going to select the clip and then press Control Shift and C on our keyboard. That will bring up this extra window. And now what we're going to select is the bottom option. Make sure this one is enabled. And then we're also going to enable this check mark, which says adjust composition duration to the time span of the selected layers. Once that's selected, we're going to press OK. And now your clip is going to turn into this isolated little clip. And that's perfect to use effects on. But again, we want to do that for all the clips that follow the intro. Alternatively, you can also just right click onto the layer and then select pre-compose and it will do the same thing. Once all our layers are pre-composed and it looks something like this, which is already way cleaner to work with, we're going to go to our effects and presets panel where we get our effects and search for Twixter. Make sure you select the effect that's called Twixter Pro, then drag it onto the first clip. If you can't find this effect inside your After Effects, make sure to get it from the Discord server in the description. Once we drag the effect onto our clip, we will see all these settings in our effects control panel. And some of them we definitely have to change, starting with the FPS. Disable the check mark next to in FPS as out FPS. And now for the frame rate, enter whatever frame rate your clips have. If you want to double check, make sure you open your project, then select your footage, right click, go to interpret footage and click main. Now right in here, you will be able to copy your frame rate by pressing control and C, then you can press OK. Go back to the effects control panel and paste it right here. Next, make sure the image prep is set to contrast slash edge enhance. Put the frame interpolation from blend to motion weighted blend and then the warping from inverse to inverse with smart blend. Now zoom in onto the clip and make sure you're on the first frame of it. Then set a keyframe for the speed percentage by clicking on this little clock next to it and put the value from 100 to 200. 200% just means double of the speed. 100% would be normal speed. Now press you on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. Go to the middle of the clip, which would be approximately here and then put the value from 200 down to 60, meaning 60% 60 of the original speed. Now go to the end of the clip and put the value back to 200. And what we did now is add some slow motion to make the clips a bit smoother. But before we go to the next effect, we have to make sure that we change the speed in which the 
this animation is playing. And to do that, we're going to select all of the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now, when we open up our graph editor, you will see this value graph right here, which gives us the ability to change the speed in which our animation is playing in. And how we want to do it is fast at the beginning, slow throughout the animation, and then fast at the end again. So we're going to click onto the graph and you will see this yellow handle. And to make it fast, we're just going to drag that straight down. And then we're also going to extend the bottom one a bit to the left, not all the way though. And now on the other side right here, we want to mirror what we just did. So we're going to drag it down again. And then the one in the bottom, instead of dragging it to the left, we're now going to extend it to the right a little bit. So it looks nice and equal. Once that's done, we can close our graph editor and our animation will look way smoother. The next effect we're going to add is a zoom in to secure some additional movement. So go to your effects and presets panel and search for S underscore blur more curves. Drag the S underscore blur more curves effect onto your clip. And we don't have to change any settings in here. The only thing we want to do is set the keyframe for the Z distance. Leave it at one and then go to where the clip ends right here and put it to 0.85. As you can see, this will zoom the clip in. And we're going to do the same thing as earlier. We're going to speed up the animation a bit by changing the graphs. So select the clip and press U on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. Then select the bottom two, which are for the Z distance. Right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Open the graph editor. And because we only created two keyframes instead of three, the graph will look like this. Now click on the graph. I'm going to start by dragging the top yellow handle down, not all the way. And make sure it's also not all the way to the left. Keep it a bit diagonal. And again, we're going to mirror that by the bottom one. But this time go above the line, something like this. Now, depending on how hard you want your zoom to be, you can always adjust these handles. So let's say in this case, I want a bit harder zoom. I'm going to drag it down and make the angle a bit sharper, something like this. And obviously I'm going to do the same thing for the other handle as well. So this should be good for this type of edit. And then if you want a softer one, you can leave it like this, or you can go even harder depending on your personal situation. Now, once we finished editing the graph, we can exit the graph editor again. Now you can see we have all of these effects on our clip, but obviously we don't want them to just be on one clip, but we want them to be on all the clips that our edit contains. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the keyframes, make sure all of them are blue selected. Then we're going to head to the left, click onto the effect name, Twixer Pro, and then press Ctrl and C to copy them. Now to apply them to all the other clips, we're going to go to the beginning of the next clip right here, click onto the layer, and then press Ctrl and V. And after loading for a bit, you can press U and it should bring up all the keyframes you just applied on here. There's just two things you want to watch out for when doing this. First of all, that the keyframes start on the exact second where your clip starts. And you want to make sure that they also end on the same frame where your clip ends. Because in some instances, it might end up looking like this, where the keyframes are just way too long for the clip. You can see my clip ends here, but the keyframes are stretched out all the way to here. And if that happens, no problem. Just make sure you select all of them. And while pressing Alt on your keyboard, you adjust the length to fit your clip. Either make it less or make it more, however you need it. Now, once we applied the effects to all of our clips, our edit will already look way better. And now the next thing we have to do is finish our intro. And for that, I'm going to disable the sound of the music so I can only focus on what the characters are saying. So just click the little speaker. And then I'm going to listen along to the voice lines. What are you drinking? Once I heard what the characters are saying, I'm going to head to the top and select the T for text. And then I'm going to click onto my screen and type what the character is saying. Once you finish typing, you might realize that the text is completely off and it's not centered. It's way too big. And to change all these settings, you can see on the right, this character panel opened up. All these settings in here are responsible for how your text is going to end up looking. So now to, for example, change the size of your text, we're going to select all of the text, make sure it's all marked. And then we can, for example, reduce the font size. As you can see, this will make the text smaller. We can also increase the vertical scale, so make it stretch vertically a bit more. You can do the same horizontally, however you want. For more text effects, make sure to click the tutorial in the top right corner. Now, once you adjusted the size of your text to your liking, we're going to open the align panel on the right and make sure it's centered horizontally and vertically. So it's in the middle of the screen. And because our text like this looks pretty plain, we're also going to add some effects to make it spice up. So go to your effects and presets panel and start by searching for bevel alpha. Drag that onto the text layer and next search for deep glow. Again, if you can't find the effect, get it from the discord server and then drag it onto the layer. As you can see, it's now pretty bright and we don't want to have it that bright because no one can read the text like this. So we're going to set the exposure from 1 to 0 0.5 and the radius from 500 down to 400. And now the last effect we want to add to our text is called drop shadow, which as the name already says, will add a shadow and generate some depth. Drag it onto the layer and then put the opacity from 50 up to 100, the distance from 5 to 0, and then the softness from 0 to 100. Now obviously, because in our intro there's more than just one line being spoken, we're going to have to change the text. And to do that, we're now going to listen along to when the next character starts speaking. And then when he starts speaking, we're going to cut the text layer and change the text in it. So drag your time indicator to before he starts speaking whatever he's saying and then select the text layer and press ctrl shift and d as you can see it's now split in half and the first bit of it which is right here will stay how it is and we're only going to change the second part so we're going to go ahead double click onto the text and now replace it with whatever our character is saying here and this will now only change the top layer and don't affect the other one we edited earlier make sure you do that for every voice line in your intro once you finished adding all the text it's going to look a bit stiff because we don't have any animations on our text it just appears out of nowhere and to now change that we're going to use an effect so open your effects and presets panel and search 
search for fade up words, then go to the very first text and drag the animation preset onto your text layer. Now, as you can see, our text disappeared. This is totally normal. Just make sure you press U and you now can see two keyframes. If you play ahead, you will see that the text slowly starts fading up. What are you drinking? But as of now, it's going a bit slow and we need it to be faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the keyframe, the second one, and drag it to the left a bit. And if it's the other way around and your text is going too fast, you're going to do the opposite thing and drag it to the right. Just make sure that when you preview your edit, it all lines up. What are you drinking? Now, we don't only want to add a fade in animation, but also a fade out animation so that by the end of our text, it doesn't just disappear, but slowly fades out into the next one. And to do that, we're going to click onto our text layer and press T to bring up the opacity property. Then we're going to go ahead a decent bit before our text ends and set a keyframe at 100. Now go to the end where the text is over right here and set the value to zero. Now, as you can see, it will slowly disappear. Last thing we're going to add to our text is the effect called increased tracking. This will just add some movement and make it look a bit smoother. So go back to the beginning of your text and drag the increased tracking effect on here. Now press U to bring up the keyframes and make sure you drag the second one all the way to the end. Then click this little arrow which will make you go to the next keyframe and put the value from 40 down to 4. Make sure you apply these three effects to all your text layers. Now after we added the intro and outro, the most important thing is going to be adding a good color correction. So head to the top under layer, click new and select adjustment layer. Now we're going to duplicate this layer twice so we're going to click on it and press Ctrl and D twice. So we have three total layers. And the mistake that so many new editors do is completely disregard the importance of a good color correction. Because as you can see, adding a good color correction can increase the quality of your edits from looking like this into looking like this. And if you now want to get this exact color correction that I use to make my edits look the best as possible, make sure to click the first thing in the description because I'm still currently running a huge opportunity. You can get all my handmade presets optimized for editing for up to 70% cheaper. So if you want to take editing and posting on social media more serious, click the first thing in the description and learn from the best. After you edit your high quality color correction, search for the S underscore flicker effect. Drag it onto the top adjustment layer, put the amplitude from 0.2 to 0.1 and the random frequency from 30 down to 10. Lastly, search for S underscore shake and drag it onto the bottom adjustment layer. Put the amplitude from 1 to 0.2 and the frequency from 8 to 3. Enable motion blur and this will just add an overall smooth panning to your clip. And to now get our edit out of After Effects, we're going to use the normal After Effects render queue. So head to the top under composition, click add to render queue, click onto where it says comp 1 and save your edit wherever you want to have it. Then give it a name, click save and then press render. Now notice that rendering might take a while depending on how fast your PC works. And once you're done rendering, this should be your final result. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more tutorials and see you next time.